This is great. It's a five minute bike ride. There's some big wings. There's some big, beautiful wings. Leah is conserving and protecting Arizona's bald eagles. Oh, okay. He just left. So is Eduardo. Yeah. Lindy is too. It's an awesome job. <laughs> They're all part of the 2017 Arizona Bald Eagle Nest Watch program. It's one of a kind with a long history and proven results. Over the 40 years of the Nest Watch program, there's nearly been 100 bald eagles that they have saved just by being out there and able to identify when they've gotten themselves into life-threatening situations. My name is Lindy. DJ Jones. My name is Courtney. I'm from Wisconsin. From Bozeman, Montana. From Tucson, Arizona. Denver, Colorado. My name is Eduardo. I am from Veracruz, Mexico, and this is my second season as a nest watcher. Nest watchers come from in and out of state to help Arizona Game and Fish keep an eye on bald eagle nests during the breeding season. Welcome, everyone. Super excited to get the season started this year. It's an honor to have you guys here. You're a very important part of the overall uh, eagle management program. You're our, you're our eyes and ears out there. You're Game and Fish biologists like Kenneth Jacobson, Kyle McCarty, and Kurt License are the core of Arizona's bald eagle management program. They get support and guidance from the Southwestern Bald Eagle Management Committee. It's a coalition of federal, state, county, and tribal agencies along with private businesses and organizations with a common interest in bald eagle conservation. It's a little bit of a special year for us. This is the 40th anniversary of the Arizona Bald Eagle Nest Watch program, so it's, it's one of those, those big years for us. For the past four decades, every year has been big for Arizona's bald eagles. Back in 1978, when bald eagles were listed as endangered, there was only 11 known breeding areas in Arizona. Uh, as of today, we've got 84 breeding areas across the state. Our population is, is getting bigger each and every year. And nest watchers are a key part of that success. They don't monitor every breeding area, just a dozen or so in areas with a lot of human activity. Bald eagles build their nests near rivers and lakes, the same places people go to recreate. Hiking, boating, horseback riding, really any human activity can disturb eagles and cause their nesting attempts to fail. You know, if the eggs are uncovered long enough, they'll get cold, obviously, and they'll be non-viable. Incubation lasts about 35 days, and even after the eggs hatch, it takes about three weeks before an eaglet can control its own body temperature. It's during that period, if people come in and flush those adults off the nest, that's when failures can happen really quick. It could be just a matter of five, 10, 15 minutes if, if birds are flushed off the nest at the wrong time. That's why these nest watchers are there, to protect nesting bald eagles from natural and human disturbances. The seasonal job takes place in the field, but it starts in the classroom with a two-day orientation. We've got a lot of information to cover over the next couple of days. Information about the bald eagle's life cycle. The nestlings when they first hatch are these just tiny little bobble-headed guys. Around the fifth week they're really starting to change over into looking like an eagle. At about 12 weeks they're ready to fledge and nest watchers are with them every step of the way. Nest watchers work 10 days on and four days off. On weekends, when public recreation is heaviest, they watch the nests from dawn to dusk. On weekdays, they get to explore the area around the nest to find out how the eagles are using their habitat. There's basically three main goals for the Nest Watch program, data collection, education, and conservation. So first of all, let's talk about data collection. The male just came into the nest. So I'm going to have um, to start taking notes about that. Nest watchers collect all sorts of data. What adults you see, what they're doing, any nest activity with the chicks. Flight paths, perches, prey deliveries. There's a whole section for human activity and the eagle's reaction. It's all valuable information used to guide future decisions on bald eagle management. Education. It's right in here in the scope. You can use that to focus if you need. But you can expect to be talking to people on pretty much a daily basis. This is a nice view. Not all nests are this easily um, easy to see into. And so like these birds, you can see their eyeballs. It's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Some of these sites have closures. So you'll be talking to folks about closures and where those boundaries are. <gasps> oh, it's beautiful. Oh, 
Oh, Sherry. It's a baby. You Believe it or not, there are still people this. here in Arizona, residents lived in Arizona their entire lives, have never seen a bald eagle. I do, I see them. So they don't get the characteristic white head and white tail until they're five years old. What a treat. Thank you You're very welcome. much. That's a pretty special moment for them. So that gives us a good opportunity uh, to teach them a little bit about bald eagles, their biology, their sensitivities during the nesting process. Conservation, yes. Having you out there on a daily basis, it gives us a chance to identify when those, when those eaglets, when the nestlings, when the adults get themselves into some sort of life-threatening situation. And that's a red flag. The orientation ends with an up-close look at several eagles, courtesy of Liberty Wildlife. So this is Laddie. She got her name. She came in from you guys. The nonprofit has treated dozens of bald eagle nestlings that were rescued, thanks to nest watchers who notified Game and Fish when the birds were in trouble. Nest watchers work in teams of two. They're assigned specific breeding areas with pre-selected campsites and observation points far enough from the nest so they don't disturb the eagles. It's going to be really hard to top today. After two months on the job, we caught up with Courtney and Peter, who are monitoring the Whiskey Springs breeding area at Lake Pleasant. It's cool to see where they've been. You know, they like perch right here. They're standing at the over. edge of a cliff directly above the nest they've been watching from across the lake. So the little peninsula out on the corner, our, we park our tent pretty close to the water. It's a special day because they're helping game and fish band the nestling. We ban the young at six weeks old because at this age, they're old enough to handle a little bit of that stress, but they're not old enough that they can fly. I have never done anything like that before. I mean, holding a large raptor like that was pretty incredible. Several weeks after the nestling is banded at Lake Pleasant, we visit the sycamore breeding area on the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation. Leah and Jen have been monitoring this breeding area for the past seven years. The big difference here is we have a new male. The male that was here previously was banded. He was 25 years old. A tribal member found his body along the river in January. First year that this area was active was in 97 and he was a five-year-old male at that time. That's generally when eagles start to breed is at five years old. There were only a few years that they didn't have chicks, so he put a lot of young eagles out into the population, which is awesome. It's just fun. It's like getting to know somebody, except a bald eagle. It's pretty easy for nest watchers to become emotionally attached to the eagles they're watching. Yeah, you walk that line between getting super, super attached and being objective and just scientific about it. The one word of advice that I've got, failures do happen. Uh, we've had nestlings right at the ed edge of fledging fly from the nest, and before they hit the ground, there's coyotes already at a dead run heading for that nestling. The eaglet banded at Lake Pleasant earlier in this story died in the nest only weeks away from fledging. Found out we had some parasite issues that we'll have to uh, deal with in the future. Nature can be cruel and unpredictable, but the Nest Watch program gives a handful of eagles a better shot at survival. The ultimate goal of the program <laughs> is to produce as many nestlings as possible, as many young bald eagle fledglings taking to the sky at the end of the season. In five years, they'll be raising nestlings of their own. Bald eagles were removed from the endangered species list in 2007, but they're still protected by state and federal law. And while Arizona's population is relatively small, it's growing, thanks in part to the Arizona Bald Eagle Nest Watch Program. Very much a uh, program that's, that's got 40 years of, of success and it's that success that, that keeps, it, uh, keeps it going into the future.